Hi guys and uh, welcome to the channel, Andy here with you and today I thought what we'd do, we're going to have a look at a, a local classic car show and uh, this one is in fact in the village of Meldrith, it's, it's, it's a village where I was brought up about and uh, so what I'll do, I thought we'd go and have a look at it. And welcome back. So here we are at Meldrith, um, the classic show here. It's on about every year. Last time I was here about two years, three years ago, just before COVID. So I thought we'd go back and uh, we'll have a look. Um, it costs actually a fiver to get in and uh, you get a, um, a, a, a bit of paper that tells you about all the different types of model classic cars that are here. So we have a quite a wide range of cars here and I've got a bit of paper here that actually tells me about all the different uh, vehicles that are here and who owns them and, and oh no, actually all about them, the history about them. So we're going to start off with one just up here which is a, in fact a Daimler. Well this in fact is a 1964 Daimler and um, uh, it's a V8 sports car and uh, it's the last one uh, that was designed from scratch and uh, a very nice vehicle too. You know, nice smell of leather here and, uh, and, and not an airbag in sight. Well, this is a nice one. This is an Austin 7, uh, a, a sort of racing model uh, built in. 1937. Got the old, the old wire wheels here and everything. And uh, guess what size engine it has? So the size of the engine in this Austin 7, believe it or not, is a 747 cc's. So as we're walking around the, the classic car show here in Meldrith, we come across one. This is a 1926 Riley. And, um, actually, they've got the bonnet up. You can actually see inside the engine. So here's this is inside the engine here, as you can see. And uh, it's, uh, well, four spark plugs. Because I see the distributor, there's, uh, there's four leads that leading out there. And... Uh, and that's a part of the, the, the wiring loom there and everything. And uh, it's actually only 12 horsepower. Now, in my early 20s, I had one of these MGB, but I didn't have this because this is actually a V8. And uh, yeah, it's got a Rover 3.5 engine in that. So, I mean, that shifts. I mean, mine was, I think it was a, a four cylinder job in there, but this, a V8, very small, 1978, very fast. And here, in fact, there's a, another, another V8, this red one down here as well. Now, I've just actually been reading up, my MGB was a 1.8 litre four cylinder. Not like these, well, these are 3.5 with the Rover engine. They must have been so fast. Evidently, the brakes and the suspension has all been upgraded. So, um, they, evidently, they do, they do, in fact, handle quite well. Well, for, for that era of car. So, this is a, a BMW Z1. And, uh, in fact, there was a probably around about 8,000 produced and the doors on here actually they go down into the seal so uh, it's a totally new concept way back then
Well, that's very nice of him to show me how the doors worked and everything. And uh, he said that he, he took it to Germany to have it repaired once because not many people can actually know how to, to repair on it. It's quite complicated as the, the door sort of goes in the seal and runs a little bit underneath the actual um, uh, uh, the floorboard, so to speak. Anyway, next stop is um, we're going to have a look at a, a American muscle car. As I was saying, a muscle car, um, yeah, 1973, and uh, actually the owner found this in a field rusting away, and it's, you're saying it's a 17-year-old project, and it's still ongoing, um, and he's, he's put a new engine in it, actually, and uh, I'll just read it up, and it's a 6.4-litre engine. My God, it's expensive to run, I bet. So we go, we're going to look at car number 14, actually. It's, it's, a, it's a Bentley. It's 1937. And originally, so I get it was a Rolls Royce, but it was acquired by Bentley. And so it's got the, uh, got the Bentley front to it and everything. Once again, these old cars have this lovely smell of leather and everything, actually. And uh, on the on here, I don't know if you can see this. Um, you have all these bits and pieces on the steering wheel here, actually. And of course, the latest cars, it's for your radio and your multimedia stuff. But on here, it's all to do with the engine. It's an advance and retard the engine. Uh, so when you put your foot down, it, re it retards the sparks a little bit, so it runs a bit better. So that's what all these these bits here are for. So I gather. So this is a Morris Bullnose here, as you can see. You've got like the front of it actually looks like a bullnose. That's why the name, I suppose, really. Uh, 1927. It's an olden, but it's still running. And if you get in the way, he's got this. I'm sure that makes a lot of noise if you get in the way. I thought we'd come across one of the oldest cars here at the, uh, the Meldriff uh, Classic Car Show. This is a Buick. Now, this is, in fact, actually was a 1913. And, um, yeah, I mean, even, even the wheels here are wooden. So, with this Buick, um, it's got uh, two rear brakes only. There's no front brakes and a handbrake as well. So, stopping, well, you've got to be very careful. So at the motor show here, they've got a well, motor show, the classic car show here in Melbourne. They've got a bit of everything. Um, they've got some bikes as well. Let's have a look at them. So reading up on that bike, it's in fact an ex-police bike and uh, I can't see much more information about it. Right, we can go to a freewheeler now. Let's have, let's have a quick look at that.
Well, the triking concept of uh, cars, so like was for sports cars, was done in the twenties. That one we just looked at just now was uh, was built in 2014, and uh, yeah, very nice nick as well. Well, there we go, guys. That's my, my little trip to the Meldruth Classic Car Show. It's on every year. And I said before, last time I was here, it must have been, I think, just before COVID. So it's nice to come back and have a look and uh, see what's around. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. And if you want to leave a comment, yeah, I read most of them and I try to reply to most of them as well. So once again, this is Andy saying thanks very much for watching. And uh, if, if you're from Meldruth and you live overseas and all that, a big hi to you and uh, well to show you what's happening in Meldrith now bye for now bye bye